simply thread a needle. First, you're going to cut yourself off a nice piece of string, or in our cases, embroidery flosses. floss. No, your nails do not have to match the embroidery floss. It just happens that mine do. So I have a little piece cut off right here. You can see this end, and you want to make sure that it's really pointy. So you're going to take your fingers on there, well, five or six times to make sure that the end of the thread is not frayed. Then you're going to pick up your needle and notice it's got two ends. This is called the eye, where there's like a little window opening, and the pointy end is called the nose. And you want to work like this. I hold the thread very closely near the end. You just want to guide that through the eye of the needle. And what it's going to look like is this. You're going to have a long end of your string. I call that the tail. And then a short end. You do not have to tie any knot to this part of the needle. We want that to be flexible because at the end we want to be able to take that off like this. So don't tie a knot there. But what you do want is a knot at the end of your string. So here's the other end that's not in the needle. The way you're going to make a knot there is you're going to make a circle. I had a little kid tell me that this looks like a balloon. You see the little balloon? And then you can take this end and you can pretend to bring it through the middle and pop the balloon. So bring that right through the middle. And when you pull, you'll have a glorious little knot. So this is what it should look like. All set up. You've got the point of the needle here. This is one end of your thread. You can follow it around and at the end there should be a knot. The reason we want that knot to be here is so that when we go into our fabric, I have a little piece of fabric here. I'll actually simulate it with a piece of paper. Let's pretend this is our fabric. When you pull that through, you want the knot to catch, almost, almost catch. So now, as much as I tug on this needle, it's going to stay put. Now to make a running stitch, you're just going to go forward, pierce the paper this way, and then come up in an area just in front of that first stitch. And we're working on following lines in our photograph. So it might help to just practice a few running stitches. Beautiful. And you want to try to make each one of those stitches consistently the same length. So I've practiced for a long time, so mine are pretty consistent. You can also try a stitch called the back stitch, which is where you come up, but this time, instead of going forward, you come back through this hole, the previous hole. And I just want to show you, this is the difference. The back stitch gives you a more solid line. You can barely even tell where one stitch ends and the next begins. There you go. When you're done, to change to a new color, you just take your needle and go... Hello! How are you? I am well. I'm filming a video. One second. Hi, thank you. And then, then you're going to go through each one of those stitches like that. And then you can cut with the scissor right there. Very good. All right. And that's our basic intro to sewing. All right. I wish you well. Have fun with your stitchery.